Hi, buddy. This is Folly, and welcome to Podcast 1.2. This podcast we're going to differentiate between accuracy and precision. They don't both mean, right? We're going to learn how to measure, as they say in India. We're going to review scientific notation, figure out the units for all this junk, those prefixes, which maybe you took a quiz on today, and maybe you didn't. Uh, conversion of centimeters cubed to milliliters, and identify the equipment, blah, 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 and define mass. So it's kind of a lot, so let's hop to it. Accuracy and precision. Accuracy is correctness. Okay? So if you're accurate, you're on target. Right? So correctness or on target. So if your lab is accurate, you got the answer you're supposed to get. Precision is predictability. So for example, this is precise because if I shot another bullet, it would be over here somewhere, you know, somewhere in that circle. This is not precise because you can't quite tell where the next bullet's going to be. This one is both accurate and precise. Accurate's on target, so it's accurate, and it's precise, it's repeatable, you know it's going to be close. This one is fairly accurate, right, because it's kind of close to the target, but it's not very precise. You can't predict where it's going to be. Okay. I don't like the blue. I'm going to change to something darker. Watch, it's not even blue. Come on. There we go. Okay. Several lab groups measure the density of aluminum. Here is their data. Team 1, team 2, blah, 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 blah. The accepted value is 1.13 grams per milliliter. That's not very good at all. Is the class accurate, precise, both, or neither? So is this close to 1.13? No. No. And let's see, if it was accurate, this last digit would be... I mean, like, these two would be the same. This would be the only variation. It could still be accurate, um, and the last digit would have some variation. So is the class accurate? Okay, it is not accurate because not close to target. Is the class precise? So are we close? This is 2.7-ish, 2.78, 2.8, 2.7, 2.6, 2.65. If you were to have someone else do this, um, could you predict pretty well where their, um, where their data would be? Yeah, it's going to be like 2.7 plus or minus 0.1. Okay. So that's going to show it as precise because predictable. And that Precision is a little bit debatable, but not much. Okay. Team 8 did four trials, so this is just Team 8. And this is the number that they got, numbers that they got. Describe those results. Okay, so 1.11, 1.12, 1.11, 1.12. .1 so it is precise, it is pre predictable, because within 0.1, and it is accurate because close to, what do we look for, 1.13. Team 9 did four trials. Uh-oh. 1.12, 2.782, and 11. Okay. Now, the correct answer is 1.13. This one's accurate. But overall, these are very far away from that. So overall, they are not accurate because not, they're not close to the target, and they are not precise. And I guess technically I should be writing imprecise. And inaccurate. Huh. Uh, you know what I mean. How many numbers report? So when I measure, when you measure, you always have a, let me see if I wrote this down already, a numbered part. So looking here, this is definitely three. Three point something. An unnumbered part, oh look, it's really close to the 3.4. And then an estimation. Okay, so I look right here, this is, actually, you know what, I said it was 3.4, I'm going to call it, I think it's just a smidgen to the left of that, 3.39. So a numbered, an unnumbered, and an estimation. So if I'm reading this, okay, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. So this is, the numbered part is 60. And it looks like it's a smidgen above the 66, 0.2 milliliters. Remember, when you read, you read the bottom of the meniscus. We did this in lab today. Read the bottom of the curve there. Here's a temperature, 70. Oh, look here, 72, 74, 76, 78, 
80. So this one would be it's right on 76, but I need an estimation, right? Numbered says 70, that says 76.0 degrees Fahrenheit. And don't forget your units. <gasps> I forgot my units up here. Scientific notation. Scientific notation is stuff you've seen before. Um, you move the decimal, and that tells you your exponent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This moves at 5 spots, so it's going to be 10 to the 5th. Now, because it is smaller, it's going to be negative 5. So this would be 3.50 times 10 to the negative 5th, and that's that number. Okay. So remember, a negative exponent equals less than 1, or smaller than 1. And in scientific notation, your number is always between um, 1 and 10. Books are using spaces instead of commas now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's going to be times 10 to the 8. And that's positive 8 because it's bigger than 1, so it's 1.95. I do want to point out I often use 3.50e negative 5. That's what your calculator uses. It's called engineering notation. That's what I'm going to use the rest of the way. You should be able to do see both. This one's less than 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be 4.00e negative 4. And then 2.55e7, going the other way, that's going to be 2, 5, 5. And I can move the decimal seven spots from here. It's positive seven, so it's going to be bigger than one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Ah, bam, there you go. 3.12e negative 3, so 3, 1, 2. If it's negative 3, it's going to get smaller. 1, 2, 3, point oh oh three one two. 1.88e negative 3, again, 1, 2, 3.00188. I hope I'm done. Metric units. Base units don't have prefixes. So mass is in grams. Really, it's kilograms, like the make day is kilograms. We're going to pretend that it's kilograms. And it's measured with a balance. So it measures mass, a balance. Length is in meters. Base unit is M. And that's use a meter stick or a ruler. Volume is in liters, which is L. We use a graduated cylinder. Now, technically, meters cubed, and this is where, for our class, liters is just fine, but meters cubed is technically the right answer there. Temperature is in kelvins. Celsius is OK. And what do you use to measure heat? Duh. And so, so duh. Thermometer. Thermo means heat. Meter means measure. Oh, how clever. Energy is in joules. That's capital J. Sometimes we use calories, but not very often. And what we use to measure energy in is called a calorimeter, like a calorie meter. Prefixes. We talked about these in class a little bit. Deci, centi, milli, micro, nano. Come on, nano. Come on, kilo. Deci, so 10. Decigrams equals 1 gram. 100 centigrams equals 1 gram. 1,000 milligrams equals 1 gram. And this could be anything. 1 E6, so 1 million microliters equals one liter. Um, and nano is a billion, one E9. Nano joules equals one joule. And kilo, um, one, this is the only one that's different, 1,000 meters equals one kilometer. So notice I have the base unit is one for all of these ones that are smaller. And this is the way I use them. And then kilo is the only one where I flip that. I hate units and want to cancel. Kill them. So convert 0.035 weeks into seconds. Oh, I need to actually do that. So 0.0035 weeks is what I'm going to write down my given to these conversions. What I do is times dividing bar. Now, in math class, you learn that 7 halves times 3 sevenths equals, and you go, oh, cancel them. Ah, get rid of them. I hate your numbers. OK. So I've got weeks here, so I want to cancel the weeks. And go into seconds. Well, I don't know how many seconds are in a week, but I don't know how many days are in a week. Seven days in one week. So I get rid of weeks. Cancel. Times dividing bar. Goodbye days. I'm going to go into something I know. Oh, I don't know how many seconds are in a day, but how many hours are in a day? 24 hours in a day. Now days are gone. I've canceled them. Times dividing bar. Get rid of hours. Go into minutes. 60 minutes in an hour. Goodbye hours. Times dividing bar. I hate you, minutes. Go away, minutes. And go into seconds. 60 seconds in one minute. And then I get out my handy dandy little calculator. Remember, everything on top you multiply, and everything on the bottom you divide. 0.0035 weeks 
times 7 times 24 times 60 times 60 is 2116.8, which this has to you know, go deal with rounding later. But I'll just call that 2100 seconds. You don't have to worry about where to round yet. That's something else entirely. A cheetah runs 112 kilometers per hour. Convert that to millimeters per day. So if I have 112 kilometers per hour, I don't want to write it kilometers slash hour. I want to write it kilometers over hours. And I'm doing the same thing. If I hate you kilometers, I want you to be millimeters kilometers. Yeah, but I don't know how many millimeters. I don't know how many millimeters in a kilometer. So I have to go through the base unit first. So because I've memorized those prefix things, I know there's 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Goodbye kilometers. And then meters on the bottom. And I want to go to millimeters millimeters, and there's 1,000 millimeters in a meter. Bam, bam, times dividing bar. Oops, millimeters is what I want, but I'm in hours, and I want to go to days. So to cancel hours, remember it's a diagonal move. Hours to days. And there are 24 hours in one day. So calculators assemble. 112 times 1,000 times 1,000 times 24 is a really big number, 2, 6, 8, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that many zeros, I like to see scientific notation if I have three zeros or more. So 2.69 E, it's going to be positive, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Hopefully a calculator just told you that. Mine's making me count millimeters per day. Go cheetah, go cheetah. An ant hill in my yard is 3.54 centimeters cubed. What is the volume in meters cubed? 3.54. Now, this first part, I'm going to ask you not to write it down because it's to teach you. Okay? So here's centimeters cubed. And I'm going to go into meters cubed. And if I did this, your first thought, again, don't write this part down. Your first thought might be 1 meter and 100 centimeters. But that's not quite right. What we should do first is we've got 3 centimeters cubed here. So I'm going to do centimeters cubed. If I did this, this wouldn't cancel all three of them. This changes this to 2. So I have to do it again. OK? So then I'm going to do centimeters on the bottom, meters on top. That cancels my 2. This is 100 still. That cancels my 2 to just be a 1. And then I have to do it again, 1 meter, and then 100 centimeters. And finally, 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 I've canceled all of those units. Now there's a shorter way to do this. 3.54 centimeters cubed times dividing bar. And I have 100 centimeters and 1 meter. Now, if I cube my units, I also cube my conversion factors. So notice, 100 times 100 times 100, 100 cubed. 1 times 1 times 1, 1 cubed. So that's much shorter. This is what I would like you to write down. And write a little comment about, you know, cube the numbers and units. So make sure that the numbers go with the units. And if it was squared, you would square the number and the units. So 3.5 divided by 100 cubed is 3.56 e negative 6 meters cubed. That's an ant hill. Let me tell you. 3 point, I'm sorry, 6.43 e4 millimeters kilometers. So this is actually easier. 6.43 e4 millimeters to kilometers. So I hate you millimeters. Now, I don't know how many kilometers are in a millimeter, so I have to go right to meters. One meter is 1,000. Now, where am I getting this from? I remember I listed what all those things are equal. Oh, yeah. You should have those close to memorized. So now I'm getting out of meters and going into kilometers. And then one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So you really need to know those conversion factors very well. So 6.4, 6.43. Second E4 divided by 1,000 divided by 1,000. By the way, if you hear me say second E, that's 0 0.0643 kilometers. I don't ever want you to hit type in your calculator times 10 caret. It'll mess up your order of operations. This is bad. OK, don't do that. That's a caret. That's not enough. OK, that's bad. Hit second. And then there's a comma button, and that'll make that E thing show up. OK, so use that. This is good. Right. How many centimeters cubed are in a 2 liter? Now remember, 1 centimeter cubed equals 1 milliliter. So if I have 2 liters, 2.00 liters, 
times dividing bar. I don't like you liters. I want to go into milliliters. One liter is a thousand. Notice this prefix still works with any of those units. So liter goodbye, thousand milliliters. Now I gotta get rid of milliliters and go into centimeters cubed. One centimeter cubed equals one milliliter. No, that was hardly worth doing. Two times two thousand is hardly worth your calculator. Two thousand centimeters cubed. By the way, if you ever watch doctor shows and they say I need fifty cc's of something stat, cc's is a cubic centimeter. Isn't that clever? Mass. Mass is the amount of matter in a substance. Hey, that's just a little happy definition there. Okay. It's not the pull of gravity, so it's different. Weight is the pull of gravity. Not much difference for us unless we change planets or ride on elevators. So no mass is the amount of matter, amount of stuff in there. So the only way it changes is if you change planets. Review. Ding, ding, ding. I hate units, so I cancel them. Precision is nice. But it may not get you an A. <laughs> you can consistently you can be precise and keep getting D pluses and D pluses and D pluses, but it doesn't get you an A. How much mass can you bench press? No one really says that much, so I will end here. Doodle.